Hello friends. Welcome to Thinker Views podcasts where we share our book reviews with you. Every historical account written after many years of the actual series of incidents happening relies highly on the research material available. Often, even the reference material is found written from the perspective of the author and it is natural and obvious to find it influenced by the political situation at the time of writing it. It is thus rightly said, till the tiger learns to write, Hunter will be the hero of the story. We see a lot of bias in one-sided narrative regarding various historical incidents. So when some scholars and researchers decide to explore them as much neutral or from a different perspective, his or her job becomes more challenging to view the incidents as they happen and more importantly learn from them. The War of Panipat is considered as one of the most brutal wars fought in the last few centuries on the Indian soil. The Marathas lost the war and many authors and historians have left it unexplored. Vishwas Patil, a Marathi author, decided to explore it and to find out the most reliable account of the incident and document it as a book. He used a lot of reference books and materials available and came up with the book called Panipat. It is not only respected as a well-researched account of the war and more importantly the chain of incidents that led and the consequences that took place after the war, but also is one of the most commercially successful novel or book in an Indian language. It is worth noting that over 250,000 copies of the books are sold in Indian languages and counting, obviously. The original book is Marathi, and so we read the English translation of this book, which is done by Nadim Khan. Um, the book can be considered as a historical fiction, in a sense that when researching, if the author found some gaps, he had to fill it with most logical imagination. And if more than one different perspectives of the same incidents are found, uh, he has chosen the one that he thinks is the most logical. So let's take a look at this book then. Do you believe in the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Well, almost all of us do the judging to some extent. At the same time, we must understand that by nature we are attracted towards beautiful stuff and the cover page is responsible for making the first impression of the book it belongs to. Thus its influence on purchasing and reading or even picking the book up for further exploration cannot be ignored. It is tough to design a cover page for this type of books. The designer, however, has done a brilliant job by illustrating the war of Panipat through line drawing. The brown background has a little reddish tone representing the brutality that takes place during a war without showing them explicitly. The animals and warriors are shown in black color representing the dark face for them. The fight between the horse riding soldiers and those who are on the elephant tells a lot about the type of war we are talking about in this book. So a well thought out, well designed and balanced cover page that remains faithful to the book. Uh, not all readers will find it attractive or in the modern sense. Uh, let's discuss the plot briefly. The Mughal Emperor's power seems declining. The Marathas, based on their treaty with the Emperor, are expected to support him in the battle when the need arises. Why? Well, because Delhi was considered as the key to India, and being in the northern terrain, it is comparatively an easy target for invaders. The author mentions in the book, 
Whoever holds Delhi holds the key to Hindustan. Without a king, Delhi, as of now, is a widow. We need to rush to its protection immediately. As the Maratha Chhatrapati seat was in Satara and the political center for administration of the Maratha Confederacy is in Pune, they are physically a distance. Lucknow's Nawab Shuja Uddola was inclined to the Mughal throne like Maratha and Ujjain and other areas are where Maratha commandants and counts have their posts. Najib Khan is a cunning, selfish and brave Rohila ruler. His eyes were on the throne of Delhi. He is on good terms with the Maratha leader, but his loyalty was only for himself. To take the maximum benefit of this situation, Najib invited Ahmad Shah Abdali to attack and loot Delhi. His main aim behind this offer is, when going back to his native place, Abdali should give him Delhi to administer. What will Abdali get? Well, India was a golden sparrow and he will be about able to loot tons of wealth from this country. Upon seeing the throne of Delhi in trouble, the Maratha leaders decide to help and the thorn named Najib needs to be neutralized too. To take care of the situation, an army with the caravan has marched from Pune. How the things will take turn from here? How the deciding battle between the armies of Abdali and the Marathas took place at Panipat which the Marathas lost? You can get these answers and a lot more information in the book. Let's talk about our impressions for the book now. While many readers would know about the Battle of Panipat, it is possible to have a very limited knowledge about the war and the chain of incidents that led to it. Uh, of course, unless you love to explore various historical books and watch some Hindi TV serials like the one named The Great Maratha which was made by Sanjay Khan but mainly focused on the life of Mahadji Shinde. It was aired on Doordarshan. If you have watched that TV serial, you can easily connect with the characters in this book and incidents mentioned around here. This book has also been turned into a Bollywood movie and there was even a controversy when the movie was released. Although it was made by a reputable director like Ashutosh Govarikar, the movie did not find big commercial success and many viewers and critics found it um, having an, an unimpressive choice of actors. But we are only talking about the book here, so we would not be referencing to the movie. In the storyline, uh, we have given you only the brief idea about the plot because as we have said earlier, despite being a comparatively better known story, a lot of elements of the story talks about the incidents, actions and their consequences and these are not well known. So talking and sharing more details would include spoilers that will affect your reading experience. The book contains a lot of lessons to learn from the happenings. In the very beginning, the author introduces us to Panipat through the following words. Panipat, a small township that falls on the royal highway that during the Middle Ages began on the frontier towns of Kabul and Kandahar and came all the way down to Delhi via Punjab. A tiny station in an insignificant little state of those times. If such a small town became world famous for the battle, actually there were three big wars fought at Panipat, the brutality and devastation is imaginable. In the author's own words, the battle began at nine o'clock on that fateful day and the intensity of the combat was such 
that within eight hours the battlefield was overlaid with the mutilated bodies of 150,000 soldiers and 80,000 animals belonging to both the warring parties. The battleground must have turned red and the groups of vultures might have got their food for days. Just imagining this passes a shiver from the readers' bodies. The author brings in the details with the statistics to make it easy for the reader to understand that they put the things in better perspective. 32-year-old Sadashiv Rao Bhau, the nephew of the late Baji Rao Peshwa, set off towards the north to confront Abdali with a gargantuan army of over 1 lakh soldiers. As you can see, the book is written in a very simple language and the author talks about various attributes of the characters involved directly and indirectly. And in the following lines, he also mentions that at that time, the population of Pune city was around 20,000. So it gives you an idea that why unity amongst various kingdoms and rulers was required in the final battle. Because even Abdali was supported by many rulers. The author also explores that how cunningly and smartly Najib elaborated the battle to be at that time would be a jihad by playing the religious card. In the book is not a one-sided account of the incidents. The author also mentions at many places that Abdali and even others could see through the plans of Najib. You really think they are at fault? retorted um, Shadullah bitterly. It's you and your devious ways that the Afghans are wary of. When you are in the hot waters of politics, you bring in the angle of religion and talk of jihad. One call from Ghaziuddin and you went running to Delhi against our joint advice. You swore on the Holy Quran and when the time arrived, you forgot about your sacred oath. Abdali and his soldiers were ready to leave for their native many times. If the fate wasn't changed dramatically, the war could have been avoided. To let the reader know more about Najib, who is behind the scenes main antagonist, the author shows various shades of his characters and gives background information about him. A mere nobody, when he had arrived 15 years ago from Afghanistan in search of livelihood, Najib had appeared to Raghunath Dada on an easy pushover and even comes up with interesting lines like, but Najib had started displaying his Najibness in a matter of days. And Najib was quite sure that a day would come when Dattaji would chop his head off his shoulder it was necessary for him then to find shelter in the space between a powerful pair of legs. How the legs could be hacked when the time was ripe, Najib didn't need to learn from anybody. The invaders are invaders, but the fault is at the other end also. In addition to the traitors, the lack of communication, and more importantly, unity amongst the defenders is a bigger culprit. If the entire Bharat was united against the invaders, no invasion could have been possible. This is the biggest lesson we need to learn from history and mythology, but seems we have still a lot to learn. Two important segments of the books are the glossary, kind of list of prime characters and the detailed bibliography. For almost all the important points, the author links the source or reference he has used. Another important part that many readers avoid is maps. Yes, the book has a few maps in the beginning and you should keep referring them periodically to know the places better. The author beautifully shows how Shindes and Holkers have contributed in building the Maratha Empire and how eventually the unity started became. The Shindes and the Holkers were the two wheels on which the Maratha wagon rolls in the north. Since the passing away of Baji Rao, the wheels had slowed down. They had begun to develop a creek.
The author also brings in a blunt line as a part of conversation like the following. How much deep the hatred had found its place against each other. A devil may be a trusted one, but the descendant of a Shinde, never. Such conversations cannot lead to unity, but widens the internal differences, and the others will take advantage of them. The author is good at exploring war situations with impact. For example, that started the conflagration. The Rohila cannons concealed behind the shrubs began sprouting fire and roasting the Marathas. The fatigued Maratha soldiers began to fall like autumn leaves in the face of this strong gust of wind. In addition, the book has some other interesting lines like I have become old now, Gangoba. A dry leaf is bound to fall sooner than later. When this wild animal walks into our net, wouldn't it be better to put a ring through its nose and tame it? But the rotten seeming weed had sent down deep roots. The book is not only about war, it also talks about the code of ethics followed by the Marathas that you will find reflecting in all the wars against all the invaders from all the defenders. It is nothing less than the Dharma followed by Bharatiya warriors and mostly the response was negative. Najib's caravan was trapped inside the fort. His wife stood shivering. It would have been quite easy for the Marathas to take her hostage, but that was not how they worked. They ensured she did not come to any harm during the four days of their assault on the fort. The book also talks about spirituality and importance of the place of Kurukshetra and why the pilgrimage to the same was planned. The book has a lot of characters and some of them are historically prominent and important. If the author could have gone wrong in exploring them, it could have been a problem. Here is a small list of characters from the book. Sadashiv Rao Bhau, Parvati Bai, Chantko Ji, Rano Ji, Datta Ji, Thande Rao, Tatya, Gangoba, Malhar Holkar, Govinda Ji, Ibrahim Khan Gardi, Nana Sahib Peshwa, Chetram, Ramchandra Baba, Sultan Khan, Ahmad Khan Afridi, Zabeta Khan, and many more. Almost all the characters, despite on which side they are, get the proper weightage. For example, how Shuja Uddola kept changing his mind and eventually decided to choose his side to fight from is elaborated in detail. The loyalty of Ibrahim Khan Gadi, even when his platoon didn't get salary, and even after provoked to change the side based on religion, is elaborated very nicely. In a simple sentence, his resolution is mentioned as a part of conversation. Srimant, this Gadi will never budge from your side in life or death. The author is good at exploring scenes. I like the following scene, for example. 10 January 1760 In spite of the freezing cold, the Yamuna waters were warm. A blanket of fog covered the river and lay thick across at least half a mile on either side of the banks. And he's good at analyzing the psyche of these characters. Thrones and emperors change too. But people remain the same, although hearts do change. The translator from Marathi to English, Nadim Khan, has done a brilliant job here. We think if the words like Subedar are taken care of along with some other stuff when it comes to spelling them, it could have been even better. Our favorite line from the book is this one. His face had turned into a kaleidoscope of negative emotions, desperation, anger and anxiety. 
So, in summary, a well-researched, detailed exploration of the third battle of Panipat in the chain of incidents that led to the same. If you love historical fiction or books exploring historical events based on uh, author's perspective founded on research, you will enjoy it for sure. It is actually a recommended read for all young people and all those who grow up in India and want to absorb the rich history of this subcontinent. Thinkerview's rating is at around 8 to 8.5 out of 10. If you would like to explore this book and similar books, you will find similar works are reviewed on our blog where you can look at the book reviews and decide if some books tempt you more than others. As usual, please do let us know your comments about this review, about this book. And if you have any suggestions for us for books to be reviewed on this blog. Until next time, thank you for listening. <music>